So we're back with another Bible Lounge. We're going to keep rolling on with this What Is It series. Today, we're going to be talking about something still, continuing on with the basic stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about something that is maybe often understood, not as difficult as many other topics, but still often misunderstood, especially regarding the passage, maybe where it comes from. So today we'll be discussing and, and answering the question, what is being born again? Or what does it mean to be born again? Back in the What Is It series. All right, hang around and we'll jump into it. All right, so this is actually the second time I've had to record this today. The first time was actually not while I was at home. I was at my brother-in-law's house. I was watching their dog overnight. They have a, a, a puppy, a little husky puppy. They've had him for maybe a couple of months now, maybe two months, month and a half. He's an adorable little guy. And, and I, in fact, had him like gnawing on my arm in the video. It was a cute thing. You know, he jumps in my lap during the video. But the reason why I have to retake the video is because... I was doing all kinds of bi uh, doggy B-rolls. I was recording doggy footage for my B-roll that I'm going to show you in a minute. And in order to do that, I, I wanted to you know get some slow-mo, so I had to put it in 120 frame rate. And, and in my camera, when I do that, it automatically comes out of autofocus. And so when I was done and I went to now record, when I went to record my video, I forgot to put it back in autofocus and on the little screen on my camera I couldn't tell it was out of focus it looked like it was in focus from the spot I was sitting and to got home was ready to edit and it was out of focus so unfortunately I don't have the video of me at their house it was a little loungy chair that I found at their house the dog was like on my lap is adorable but it is what it is and at least in the heart of the fact that I was watching their dog I still have all the dog footage and I made a doggy B-roll video, so check this adorable puppy out now. All right, that, that's a uh, uh, puppy's adorable. He was gnawing on my hand half the time I was watching. He just wants to play every every second of the day. But getting back to uh, the topic. So in the What Is It series, we're coming back with a, another topic. What does it mean to be born again? Or what is being born again? What is that all about? Of course, we turn to the foundation of that statement is, of course, Jesus. So if you have your Bibles, which... By now, if you're watching Bible Lounge and you don't have your Bible ready, shame, shame, shame. No, I'm just kidding. But for real, from now on, before you even click my video, get your Bible out. We're going to turn to the Bible. If you're driving, don't worry about it. Then just listen. All right. But go to John chapter 3. I'm in Jeremiah. That's nowhere close to John. All right. John chapter 3. So what's going on here? So Jesus is talking with this. Pharisee, who, who's apparently like a high-ranking, top-of-the-notch Pharisee named Nicodemus, who came to Jesus at night because he was scared maybe of, of the other Pharisees, all right? He didn't want them to know that he was converse, conversing, conversing with Jesus. And we're going to start in, in verse 1. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So he's on the right track. He's starting to see that Jesus is no ordinary man, right? Nicodemus is like, this guy is, he's, 
he's de- he has to be sent from God or he's somebody who God has sent. Perhaps maybe at this time he thought he was a prophet, maybe something like that. But here's Jesus' response in verse 3. Jesus answers him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There it is. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We're going to keep reading for the sake of clarity, but I think it's funny, as, as, as is almost in every case Jesus teaches, he's misunderstood. His teaching goes right over the head of whoever he's teaching, and that often happens to us. And I think a lot of it in the Gospels had to be because they didn't have the Holy Spirit to, to understand spiritual truths yet. So let's keep reading in verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? So, of course, like like most, he, misint- he misunderstood Jesus. Jesus was talking about spiritual things, right? And Nicodemus' mind is about physical things, the physical, material world. Jesus is talking about the spiritual world. So Nicodemus asks him, how can we enter our mother's bellies, our, her womb, and come out again? Like, Am I going to become a baby again? What do you mean? What are you talking about? So it completely went over his head. And Jesus is sort of going to explain himself. He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's very important, born of water and the Spirit. We'll get back to that. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, And you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So the end part is pretty simple, right? He's saying, people that are born of the Spirit, you don't really see what takes place. You You don't see the spiritual realm. We don't see the spiritual side of things, right? Because we're not in the spiritual world yet. We will, when we pass on after this life, we'll be spiritual beings 100%. But we'll also be actually physical because we're getting new bodies and the resurrection. But nevertheless will be in the spiritual realm. For now, we are still a part of this physical realm. And Jesus says, you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So so, so again, just kind of this idea that, that we don't see the spirit. And, you know, it's likened to wind. The wind is uh, in the air, but you don't see it, but you see its effects, okay? And continuing on, here's Nicodemus's response nicodemus said to him how can these things be and in, in, in verse 10 here's jesus's answer to that question are you the teacher of israel and you do not understand these things this is very important okay the reason why i read until that point is because that's very important jesus expects this pharisee nicodemus to understand the things jesus is talking about this leads scholars to rightly hold that whatever Jesus is talking about, it must be from something in the Jewish scripture. That would be our Old Testament, all right? So let's go back to verse 5. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Born of water and the Spirit, what does this mean? Is this talking about water baptism? I know it's taught that way in many places. I don't think it is. I don't think this is talking about water baptism. Remember, whatever Jesus is talking about, it has to be something that this Pharisee should know. So, there is a passage in the Old Testament, Ezekiel 36. We'll start in verse 24, all right? Ezekiel 36, 24. And we'll be reading probably till 26, I believe it is. So, Ezekiel 36, 24. It says, I will take from you the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. So so Jesus is talking to the, I mean, sorry, uh, God, the father here is speaking and he's he's talking to the nation of Israel. And and this is a a promise, a, a promise to the nation of Israel that they will be restored. And in this restoration, this is what God's going to do. He says, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you 
and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. There's the water, right? Like Jesus, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit. So there's the water part. So what does the water represent in Ezekiel? It's a cleansing. It's, it's cleansing from sin. I will sprinkle, sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. In verse 26, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So we read all the way till verse 27. Look at that. Basically, Jesus is like, you're, you're going to be new. Or, uh, sorry, I keep saying Jesus. That's fine. Same thing. The father here is speaking. He says, Israel, when I make you new, you're going to, I'm going to bring you back into your land. I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. This hardened heart that Israel's had persistent is going to give him a heart of flesh. He's going to cleanse the Israelites of their sin or, or his people really of, of, of their uncleanness. And then he's going to give them the Holy Spirit. This is what happens when we get saved. When we come to Jesus, we respond in faith. We say, I believe, I, I, I want to trust in you, Lord. I, I believe that you are the Lord and I repent from my sin. And you turn to Jesus and you give him your life. What happens is you are cleansed. You are cleansed from your sin. God washes you from your sin. Jesus' blood removes your sin and he gives you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is now inside of all of God's people, all of the believers on earth right now. And any, any new believer that comes into faith receives of that Holy Spirit. So that's what takes place when you come to Jesus. You're washed from your sin. You receive of the Holy Spirit and as Jesus describes, you're born again. Not in the same way that when we were born in the flesh, we are conceived and, you know, we're born physically from a mother's womb and we come to this world and we grow. The spiritual birth, as Jesus described here, is different. You don't see its effects. You're not seeing it the same way. Spiritual birth is this confession, and then in the unseen realm, the realm that you can't see, God has given you the Spirit and made you new. You've, you've, as it were, been reborn into God's family as God's child. And now the effects of the Spirit will begin to take place in your life. You will begin to bear good fruits. You will begin to manifest God's grace and glorify God on the earth. You, you know, the, the Holy Spirit will produce fruits in your life that will show. And it's important that we realize the Bible describes really two realms of people. There's the realm of sin and death. And everybody's born under that realm. That's Romans chapter 5. Everybody's born in the realm of sin and death. We're, we're all fallen. Ever since Adam... Remember, Adam was made perfect, and then Adam sinned, Adam and Eve. And every person that was born was born after Adam's sin. So because of that, that sin and that, that, that state of being fallen from God, of, of now being imperfect and needing and, and being sinful, has carried over to every single human being. So now we need the washing and the cleansing of Christ's blood and the, and the, and the water, if, as it were, in order for us to now be spiritual. So in other words, all people born under Adam are of the flesh. And this is, this is like Romans theology, right? Are of the flesh, are of physical nature, are in the realm of the flesh, in the realm of sin and death. And flesh here, the way I'm using flesh and the way Paul often uses, not always, but often refers to the realm of, of sin and death, of sin, of, of the wickedness, right? All humans were of the flesh, are of the flesh. When we become born again, when we come to Jesus, we are no longer of the flesh. We are now born, we are removed from that realm, and we are born again into the new realm, the spiritual realm. And we are now believers. We are washed by the blood of Jesus, and we are God's children, 
And this is why the Bible tells us we are not of this world, just as Jesus wasn't of this world. Now, we still have our physical bodies that are a part of the old way, and that's why we still struggle with sin. But being, being born again means we are now abiding in Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. We're spiritual. We, begin be, we can begin to understand spiritual truths and spiritual realities. And we can look at Scripture and the Holy Spirit enlightens our eyes. And we, we can dig deep and we can study and we can learn and grow and have a relationship with the Father because we are now born again into this new realm that we call the spiritual realm. This is the realm that God is in. The realm that the angels are in. Now, we don't see that realm, but we are a part of it. We will one day be fully immersed in it where we can see it and we're living in it. But for now, we have this physical body. So we're only in that realm in spirit, in the in the area we don't see. All right? And yeah, so ultimately, that's that's what it means to be born again. You know, we are new creations when we're born again. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. The old has passed away. Forgive me for that motorcycle if you heard that. Uh, just one of the neighbors. That's what it means to be born again. It means to be a new creation. We're new. If you have received Jesus, you are new. All your sin is cleansed. It's gone. And if you've been in the faith for a long time, you're walking in that newness. So every morning you wake up, every time you repent, every time you turn from your sin, you're walking in the newness of Christ's blood. When God looks at you, he sees Christ's blood on you. And that's what it means to be born again, to live in that new creation. Such a blessed thing for us to understand and realize that we get to be a part of God's family because we're born again. And that's what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. In order to get to heaven, you have to be born again. You have to be no longer flesh. Flesh gives birth to flesh. You have to become something new. And only to do that, you have to become spiritual. No, in order to do that, Jesus is the way. We believe in Jesus. We become spiritual. And then we become heaven bound. Bound for home. Bound for glory. Because we are born into the spirit. I hope that was encouraging to you. I hope you learned something. And... That you know, that was ultimately what it means to be born again. So I'll see you on the next Bible Lounge.